Welcome to Mobile Car Mechanic. Today we're going to be reviewing the YA200 OBD2 scanner by King Bolin. Today we're going to go ahead and review the uh, review the scanner as well as show you its features. Let's get to it. All right. So first we're going to go ahead and turn the key to the accessory position so we can get some power. Um, then we'll locate our OBD2 port. OBD2 ports are typically on the driver's side dash, like lower portion of the dash. Um, you'll typically find them on vehicles 96 and up. So let's go ahead and connect it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and check out the diagnostics. At this stage, the device will figure out the protocol your, your car uses to communicate. It's pretty quick for a basic scan tool. Basically what you're gonna do is, now it's gonna bring you to a, like a summary screen to show your MLI, ML, MIL status, which is a malfunction indicator light, which is known as the check engine light. This will basically tell you if the check engine light is on, which can be helpful if somebody removed the bulb or the, the light's just not functioning. A DTC count, is going to be like diagnostic trouble code count. So it'll tell you how many codes are in the computer. Your monitors are gonna be, um, what do you call it? Uh, emissions related items that need to be set in order to pass an emissions. So monitor okay is gonna tell you how many monitors are set. Monitor complete will tell you how many monitors are not set. And monitors NA will indicate your monitors your car does not have. Now we're gonna go ahead and proceed to the next screen by clicking the okay button. Now we have other options such as read codes, which will read any codes that have set the check engine light on and pending codes that may have not set a light yet. Erase codes that are stored or pending. Live data allows you to view parameters such as RPM, engine temps, and more. Freeze frame data to display the parameters, parameters data at the setting of the check engine light. Vehicle info will provide info such as your VIN number, if your vehicle supports it. IM readiness will display your emissions monitors and if they're set incomplete or not supported. Great to, have to, great to have to check to see if your car can pass an emissions. Mode 6 will just view the data that the computer is tracking. O2 sensor test will just view the voltages and other related data to the oxygen sensors. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to read codes. We're gonna go ahead and select stored codes. So you can see, I don't have any check engine lights on right now, but if there were, this is where you would see them. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the back button. We'll check for pending codes. These are gonna be codes that didn't set the light yet. Okay, at this point, I don't have any pending codes, but again, if you saw them, they would be here. All right. And then we're gonna hit the back button. And then my car has a support for permanent codes. Basically what's gonna happen here is these are codes that are not, these are codes that were set and even after you clear the code, um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna keep track of the check engine light or the, the, the problem codes that you had in the past and make sure that the problem has been fixed. So if you replace the part for like an oxygen sensor, for example, the light will still, the light will be off, but the permanent codes will still see it. And then um, what'll happen is if you go through some, some drive cycles, out of the permanent codes, it'll clear out. Now, if we did have any codes to erase, you would hit the back button and then get to the main screen here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit erase codes. I don't have anything to clear, so it's probably gonna tell me that there's nothing there. But if there were, you would see it on the screen. It'll ask you if you wanna go ahead and delete any pending or stored codes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. In this case, I don't have anything, so it's telling me I have not met the conditions. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the main screen again, and then we're going to do some live data. I'm going to go ahead and start my car for this. All right, let's go ahead and check out live data. Here we have the options to view all the live data the car supports under all data stream. We can also graph specific data parameters under graph display. Record lets us record data on a specific data parameter to help capture info or changes. And then playback will let you view the data you recorded frame by frame. All right, just hit the OK button. It's gonna go ahead and load all the, all the parameters that our car supports. So under all data stream, you can see live data such as RPMs, coolant temperature, short and long fuel trim codes, I mean, um, percentages, just many different 
parameters of, of data. So after we're just done looking at the old data stream, we're going to go back and actually look at the graph display. So this is going to go ahead and allow us to uh, view data on a graph, um, literally graph display. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now it's going to ask us to hit OK here to select a, um, a data parameter to, to graph. In this case, I'm going to use the RPMs. All right, you hit the OK button. Then after that, to select it, you'll see OK. Just hit the back button, and then it's going to bring up the graph. Um, you can see when I hit the gas, the changes in the RPM. You'll see the graph go up and down. So you can see the changes um, when I push the throttle. This is a great example if you have, for example, a misfire or a communication issue with your crank sensor intermittently going out, as you will be able to visually see it. So now that we're done with that, just hit the back button. And then we can hit back. Now, if we want to actually record the data, say you need to drive the car but can't look at the data while you're driving, we can record it. So we're going to click OK. Hit OK again. OK. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the RPMs. OK. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click OK, hit the back button. Now we're going to select a memory slot to go ahead and save the data. I'm going to go ahead and overwrite what I had before. Just hit OK. Now you'll see that there's different frames, and it's going to capture each frame of data so you can see the changes frame by frame. All right. So at the top, you see the frame count. You'll see the RPMs, that's what I selected. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit the back button because we're done. All right, once you're done recording, we're gonna go ahead and view it. So you can go to playback, hit okay. We'll go to our memory slot that we saved it in. We're gonna hit okay. And as you can see, it's frame one. Frame two, you have to hit the OK button to go through each frame. And you can play it frame by frame at your own pace so that you can see any changes without getting confused here because you're doing it at your own pace. Once we're done, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the back button. We're going to go back to the main screen. Now, freeze frame data will allow us to look at the live data parameters at the time the check engine light was triggered, such as load, fuel trims, engine temps, etc. Probably not going to have anything because I don't have any codes, the codes stored. Vehicle info, this is going to be more of like your VIN information. Depends. Not all cars are going to support this. Your car may uh, have different uh, different options. So it's it's going to give you some basic information. Now, the IM readiness, this is going to be used for, uh, this is for your emissions monitors set in your computer. So, I'm going to go to that. As you can see, we have a bunch of icons here and some uh, different monitors. So, basically, the green check marks are monitors that are already set. The red X's mean that they're not set yet and need to be completed before getting an emissions done. And the gray means that they're not supported by the vehicle it's connected to. I'm going to go back. Mode 6, this is going to be mainly data that's um, tracked by the actual computer of the car. So this can be very helpful. For example, you don't have uh, check engine lights and things like that on just yet, but trying to do some basic diagnostics um, or in-depth diagnostics more so. I'll go back. And then we have the O2 sensor test. This is going to be more of just like data voltages and things like that from the O2 sensor. Component test. Don't really have too much information on this. It doesn't look like my car supports it anyways. So we're going to go back and get out of the diagnostics. Now say for example you do have a code. You want to look it up. In this case, I'll use the 
PO420 as an example. So here, in this case, you're gonna have a bunch of brands that you can look up to see if there is uh, dealer-specific codes, but in this case, I'll just use generic. So as you can see, there's a four-digit number after the P code. You can go ahead and adjust it going up and down. So P0420. And then when you have the code that you wanna look up, just hit okay. It'll confirm that. And there you go, it'll give you a definition. So in this case, it's the catalyst uh, system efficiency below threshold bank one. And it'll give you um, possible causes of the issue. All right. I'm gonna go back to the main screen again. If you wanna look at battery voltages, this is great because it actually does show you the voltage in digital form as well as the graph form. Um, this definitely help, you know, if you can check to see if you have any issues with the charging system, such as the alternator, you can see fluctuations. As you can see, we're in 14 volts, meaning the alternator is still good. So, yeah, so, that's pretty basic. And then you got your settings. So if you want to adjust your languages, the unit of measurements, the information about the actual device, and just a self-test. All right. So, I mean, this is a pretty basic code scanner great for beginners if something you know just even to even have in the car just in case you want to not have to keep going to advanced auto parts or these auto parts stores to go ahead and get your car scanned um honestly i'm pretty surprised at how good it is for a basic scan tool i mean if you're looking for something a little bit more advanced such as something that does abs and srs codes this is not what you're going to be looking for but if you want just something to have just even to know the code before you even go to the mechanic shop Honestly, it's cheap enough, and it's pretty darn good for the price. i totally recommend it if you just need something basic. On that note, thank you for watching the Mobile Car Mechanic and our view and overview of the YA02 OBD2 scanner. We'll see you on the next one.